Decentralization. Decentralize your life. Okay, we've got a lot to go over this week. We're going to dedicate this episode of Decentralization Sunday, which I know you probably need to do the little history lesson, but decentralization is my word for not giving corporations your algorithm and your data, no streaming. You buy your media, you own it forever. One time you own that shit. That means CDs, DVDs, cassettes, VHS, and maybe even a little bit of vinyl. <laughs> oh, Billy. So this week, uh, that's very frothy. <clears throat> so this week, we are dedicating Decentralization Sunday to a certain director named Joe Dante. Joe Dante is a protege of Mr. Roger Corman. Rest in peace. Literally, I think about a month ago, he died at, I think, 98 years old. He is a famous low-budget uh, producer who launched the careers of so many people, one of them, Jack Nicholson, uh, Peter Bogdanovich, and this man, Joe Dante, who I think this is one of his first films, was from 1978, I think, Piranha. And this, of course, was on the heels of the big Jaws hysteria and success. So, of course, they had to come up with some low-budget version of Jaws. Why not have it be a Piranha? Okay? So, as you can see at the very top, Roger Corman's cult classic, Piranha, directed by Joe Dante. I don't know uh, who's actually in this um, movie, but I'll tell you this much. There's a lot of special special features on this particular DVD, like commentaries, and I don't know why this thing is not um, focusing, but whatever. Commentaries, yep, behind-the-scenes footage, um, a new transfer, stills gallery. I love all that shit. It's one of my favorite reasons of why I still buy actively DVDs. It's not a dead technology. It is not obsolete. It is a living, breathing organism, and it's awesome. So I got this puppy from my favorite used record store for only $4.95. What a bargain. Okay, so that's Piranha. That's number one. Number two is from 1981, one of the best horror movies. I wouldn't really say it's scary, but I saw this at the movie theater when I was 12 years old. It is The Howling. And why is this movie awesome? Because it's one of the first werewolf movies where it didn't look cheesy like that Lon Chaney Jr. shit from back in the goddamn 50s. No, this thing looked like an actual walking wolf like it didn't look like a guy with makeup on of you know like tuft on hair and slicked back and some teeth put in his mouth no it looked like this scary humongous seven foot wolf thing that'll rip your fucking head off and of course the transformation scene is awesome uh this was, of course, directed by Joe Dante. There's a fuck ton of special features on the back. Please, will you? Okay, there we go. See? The making of. And I believe this launched the short-lived career of Mr. Rob Botin. Look him up. R-O-B-B-O-I-T-T-I-N. You would think Rob Botin? No, Botin. Rob Botin, very, very influential makeup artist from the 80s. He's not in the business anymore. I think he's a real estate agent. Anyway, let's go on to the next thing. Little movie you might have heard of, uh, produced by Mr. Steven Spielberg, a high-powered Jew. You might have heard of him, but this is a movie called Gremlins. And this movie actually spawned a whole bunch of like knockoffs later on, but this, this movie is pretty fucking dark. It's pretty fucking violent. I don't know why it was marketed for kids, but it's not for kids, really. Uh, so this movie came out, I believe, in 1984, the same year I got laid. But that's a whole other story. As you can see at the very top, it says Steven Spielberg presents. Notice it doesn't say Joe Dante. It's buried right there as directed by Joe Dante. This movie rocks. But you know what? Out of the two, because it did spawn a sequel, I think the sequel is way better. Why? Because it's a fucking acid trip, and it is Gremlins 2, the new batch. This movie is fucking crazy. It's 
there's a there's a character in it named Clamp. Is he Trump? Does the Pope fuck with one sock on? Uh, yeah, this movie came out, I believe, in 1987. I saw this at the movie theater, and it's one of the very uh, few movies made in Hollywood that actually has the song. Rain, uh, dun, 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 no, it's either it's either Rain and Blood or Angel of Death. I believe it's Angel of Death by a little known band called Slayer. Do yourself a favor. Gremlins 2, the new batch. It's the better of the two. Directed by Mr. Joe Dante. And last but not least, a, a movie that my brother has been telling me to fucking watch for at least three years now. I didn't want to watch it. It looks stupid. Wasn't interested. Finally bought the fucking DVD. It's for the burbs. Okay? I get it now. It's kind of like a play. There's no other... There's no other location. It all takes place in the burbs. Kind of reminds me of like me and all my fucking trials and tribulations with my next door neighbor, Joe, and the people on this side. People, I mean, it's a whole thing. When you live in a neighborhood and you have like experiences with your fucking neighbors and can be good, can be bad, but it's always interesting. And that's what the burbs is directed by Joe Dante. So there you go. We got a full five pack of Joe Dante DVDs and movies all directed by Mr. Joe Dante. Um, like my, my brother has said before, I don't care how they make the movies. I only care about the fucking movies and I'm the other way around. I fucking care about who made it. How much did it cost? Where did they film it? Who was in it? What was the bathrooms like? How are we going to fuck? Do we dance? Do we have a, you know, he, kaba, kuba, kaba, fika, flaka, flow. <laughs>